This video will show you the procedure to follow when intubating a neonate. By the end of this video, you should know how to intubate a neonate and confirm the endotracheal tube is in the trachea. You will need the following equipment and medication to perform this procedure. A laryngoscope, an endotracheal tube and introducer. The endotracheal tube should be cut to the desired length. Then an introducer is inserted in it and the tube curved. Make sure the tip of the introducer is placed at the tip of the endotracheal tube. Then bend the introducer first forwards so that the introducer cannot project beyond the tip of the endotracheal tube. And then sideways so the introducer doesn't get in the way when you go to insert the endotracheal tube. You will also need Comfield dressing, pre cut tapes, two trouser leg tapes, a base plate, bag and mask ventilator. First, ensure you have suction ready and that the baby's stomach has been emptied. For intubation, position the baby with the head towards the operator. The baby's neck should not be flexed or extended. The baby should be well sedated if time permits. Bag and mask ventilation should be ready for use for this procedure. When you are ready to intubate, place a laryngoscope into the mouth over the tongue so that the tip of the laryngoscope blade sits in the vollicula. Pull the laryngoscope gently away from you until you can see the larynx. You may need to use suction to suck any secretions out of the way. Do not tilt or rock the laryngoscope. Cricoid pressure is usually required to obtain an adequate view of the larynx. This can be achieved with a little finger on the same hand that is holding the laryngoscope, or get an assistant to help you. When you can see the larynx, place the endotracheal tube through the larynx. When the tube is in place, remove the introducer. Make sure the endotracheal tube is far enough down the larynx. Avoid placing the endotracheal tube too far down the trachea by checking the distance markers on the tube in line with the upper lip, predetermined for the baby's size. Next, confirm that the endotracheal tube is in the right position by listening for breath sounds. Breath sounds should be heard equally on both sides of the chest and not over the epigastrium. Then look for misting in the endotracheal tube. A correctly placed endotracheal tube will mist during expiration. You can also use an end tidal CO2 detector like a pedicap. When you are satisfied that the tube is in the trachea, tape it in place. You will need to provide both positive end expiratory pressure or PEEP and positive pressure ventilation. Confirm the tube is at the right distance and that the blue line on the endotracheal tube is facing the top of the baby's head. Tape the tube into position. Apply two bits of Comfield to the face where the tape will go. This Comfield stays in place during multiple retapings over the entire duration of intubation. Tape a base plate under the nose, over the top lip, and down either side of the face. Next, place the first trouser leg over the base plate. One leg of the trouser leg goes over the face and the other leg goes around the endotracheal tube like this. Pay particular attention to the distance the tube is taped at the upper lip. Wrap the trouser leg of tape around the endotracheal tube multiple times. For more secure fastening, move up the tube slightly with each wrap of tape. The endotracheal tube should be in the midline. Double check the tube is still in the trachea. Then tape the second piece of the trouser leg in the opposite direction to the first. The loose part of the trouser leg tape goes around the endotracheal tube. The tube should now be secure and the baby can be gently moved back into the resting position in the incubator. Continue to ventilate with the bag. Now attach the ventilator to the endotracheal tube. Finally, the ventilator flow sensor is placed on the endotracheal tube.